Daily graphic, Ioko CID hunt for cryptocurrency campaigns. Power supply stabilized, energy minister assures. Don't use honorary titles. They are not PhDs. University of Ghana Vice Chancellor. The Daily Guide, Auditor General cripples audit service. Nana meets foreign Yasigbe over Togo crisis. Bagwin campaign van kills two at Apam and dooms so under control, according to energy minister. Amidu gets teeth to bite, law to fight corruption ready. The Ghanaian Times, President Akufuado Yasigbe confer in Accra. V presents medals to Guardian contingent in Lebanon and Ghana grabs gold at the World Skills competition. No way for Dumso, Energy Minister says power outage uh, is over. The BNFT, Bank of Ghana stays policy rate at 17%, third time running as external headwinds pose risk to inflation outlook. And uh, the final newspaper, Ameu, outages temporal. But debt over IPPs remain big challenge. Problem with Jubilee Fields offshore tests also to blame. Agric must be a game changer, according to President Kufado. And Ghanaian company lists 10 million bond on London Stock Exchange. No room for weak banks in 2019. And over 70 civil society organizations declare RTI Red Friday. My guest this morning, the Honorable Member of Parliament for North Tongue, the Honorable Samuel Okujetua Blackwa is here. Chief, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. And the boss at the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan, John Kuma, as a lawyer. Chief, good morning. Thank you for your time. Grateful. Council, uh, Honorable, I'll start with you. Yesterday, you held a presser at Parliament and you were questioning some of the figures that have been put out by the Information Minister challenging uh, the, the questions. You want to rehash some of the key points you raised? Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning, right. John. And good morning to um, our viewers. Our press conference yesterday was to react to the Honorable Information Minister's press conference mm -hmm. he held on Sunday, at which press conference he sought to uh, cast doubt and to uh, debunk um, the assertions I had made in Parliament right. uh, during the budget debate. Mm. Um, during the debate last week, I stated clearly that a careful reading of uh, page 216, mm. Appendix 7 mm. of the tw 2019 budget reveals mm. that the Office of Government Machinery, and I have a copy of the budget here, the ceiling of staff has been increased to 1,614. Right. And it will cost the taxpayer 110 million cities. Mm. And I did make the point that Ghanaians were outraged when earlier this year, March this year, specifically on the 22nd of March, and I have the President's communication to Parliament here, the President communicated to Parliament in fulfillment of the Presidential Office Act uh, 1993, Act 463, reporting on the staffing situation at the Office of the President. Ghanaians complained about the numbers that 998 especially for a president who had appointed the highest number of ministers ever in our history 111 was unacceptable so i made the point that if Ghanaians did not accept 998 mm. <laughs> i'm not sure that 1614 will be embraced and that this pension for large government mm. is really spiraling out of control okay i did make that point and, and and if you don't mind i have a copy of the 2017 budget here okay. and uh, if you go to page 177 okay. of the 2017 budget the ceiling they had was 953 okay for the office of government machinery, machinery. okay to cost the taxpayer 79.3 uh 92 million ghana cities mm. now Clearly, there's been an increase. This ceiling of 953 was exceeded okay. by, by 45. The president reported 998. Uh, okay. We are hearing now from the information minister's press conference that perhaps there are even more that have not been reported, if you look at the trajectory of the information minister's argument. So you have a situation where the Office of Government Machinery mm. is going up. So when the information minister said last Sunday mm. that there's rather a decline, he was being economical with the truth. Says that people who are going to retire who will not be replaced. And uh, the government machinery includes 19 different offices, mm -hmm. one of which is the office of the president. Mm -hmm. So yes. bumping all together is mischievous. This is totally, totally wrong. He knows that the budget only reports the office of government machinery. Okay. The office of the president is a subset of the office of government machinery. Absolutely. So... 
the information minister made government's case even worse mm. <laughs> because the office of the president, which is only one of the 19 or more units, they mm. keep creating units every day. We lose count. Now, if just one unit of the 19, you are exceeding the ceiling for the entire office of government machinery of 953, then you can begin to imagine what is going on. And at the bottom of this discussion, the whole fundamental issue is avoiding wastage, mm. protecting the public purse. Do you see duplicity of roles duplication, in there? Role conflict and all of that. Mm. I mean, many have been asking, and, and I believe that it's time to amend the Presidential Office Act to do two things. One, to be clearer okay. on the, the functions of the people there, exactly what they do, mm. and two, to place a cap okay. so that we cannot exceed the numbers. Because, uh, I mean, ex exceed this really obscene, mm. you know, uh, arena we have mm. entered in, because we cannot continue this way. Okay. And you see, the other point that the uh, information minister makes is that he takes the 2018 ceiling mm of 1,000, I have the 2018 budget here, of 1,697. Mm -hmm. And then comes to 2019 of 1,614. Okay. And says that, oh, this must be pointing to some decline. Right. So he comfort, conveniently ignores the actuals, the 2017 report that we have in Parliament that was brought March 22nd. 2018, we don't have the actuals. Okay. And remember that 2017, they exceeded mm. the ceiling. Up to 998. Yes. So <laughs> what is the guarantee that 2018, they will not exceed the ceiling? So for the information minister to be saying emphatically mm. <laughs> at this point, very premature, you know, early in the day, that there is some decline, <laughs> you cannot be sure. You know, so, so, so the point really mm. is that even if you want to accept that they will stay within their ceiling of 1,614 okay. for the 2019 budget. Okay. Ghanaians told the president, mm. civil society, governance experts, 998, too high, absolutely obnoxious. Mm. We can't live with that, especially when we have 111 ministers. We will have thought that you will have had the leanest okay. office of the president, mm. you know, or office of government machinery mm. as compared to your predecessors. But over there too, you are setting new records, obscene records, infamous records. And we are saying that, listen to the people of Ghana. Mm. So <laughs> I, 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 what, what I, I, I cannot fathom how what, what, if 998 mm. is offensive to the Ghanaian people, 1,614 mm. will, be, will be acceptable what do you and say for which to, we should applaud government. To the school of thought that, look, parliament should have check these things. If they bring a figure that says 1,640 or less than 998 and the figures keep shooting up as we travel along, Parliament should be raising the red flags because you represent all of us. What do you say to that? No, it's a fair question and uh, I in particular have taken interest in this matter. If you notice consistently during the budget debates, mm -hmm. I've been focusing attention on the Office of Government <coughs> Machine and we have been raising these matters. Mm -hmm. At this point, this is what the minority is doing. Uh, fortunately for us, we have not voted on the budget yet. Okay. We are still debating the budget. Right. So there is opportunity for the executive, if only they'll be minded to listen, mm. to go review these figures downwards. That is the demand we are making, okay. that they should review these ceilings downwards, especially when, if you look at other critical sectors. I, 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 I heard you read the Daily Guide headline. Mm. The 2019 uh, staffing ceiling for okay. the uh, office of the special prosecutor, if you look at page 216 of this mm -hmm. budget, it's, it's only 12 and 348, office of the special prosecutor, 12. We know he needs investigators, he needs lawyers, he needs criminologists, forensic experts, and all of that. We, When we were working on the bill, we looked at best practice of special prosecutors all over the place. Mm -hmm. They are well staffed, they have experts, because fighting white color crime, corruption, mm -hmm. is such a sophisticated crime that you need personnel, qualified personnel, and he gets only 12. Meanwhile, from 2017 to now, okay. look at the quantum jump in the Office of Government Machine, over okay. 600 staff. So we don't have our priorities right. Mm. We don't seem to be putting our money where uh, we should be putting our money. Mm. And all of this is leading to a rip mm. on the public press. Are, are we checking the output of, of these uh, appointees and persons who work 
within the Office of Government Machinery? Fantastic Are they question. delivering Fan on what we ask them to Fantastic deliver? Fantastic question. I recall mm -hmm. that earlier this year, Imani had calls to issue a statement that they were concerned that some of the presidential staffers mm -hmm. were constantly on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, attacking, you know, people they disagree with and all of that. Um, you see, if you're making an impact, mm -hmm. we will feel it. We will see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, 111 ministers, thousands of presidential staffers, and yet go out there. The, the, the view of the ordinary Ghanaian is that we are not seeing the change, the transformation okay. that the president promised in, in 18 months. Remember the president said he needs 18 months to mm. transform Ghana. Right. We are not seeing it. Okay. And, and the people will complain and complain. You saw what happened in Adenta. If there is no uprising, there is no, and these days there has to be, things will have to come to a head before government will act. Government okay. is not being responsive. So Thank you. I, I, I <coughs> doubt that all of these numbers you know there's any impact so it tells you that you know big government does not mean efficient government okay. it does not mean that more results it can rather lead to the kind of situation we have now where there's a lot of duplication and and theft battles and 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 and, and confusion Council, really at the end of the day you you fall within this bracket don't you exactly uh, are you worth your paycheck that's the question that comes to me the well, bloated numbers the paycheck the Honorable Blackwell says this is cost to us. We are not feeling it. Mm. Are you worth your paycheck? Well, um, let me say good morning to viewers and to my friend uh, uh, Ablakwa. Okay. We've been friends from school days, right. so it's good to to have uh, looks and all. Yes, <laughs> and all to have him on a platform like this. But um, let me come back to the issues under discussion. So, I mean, clearly. Um, Honorable Ablaqua knows that he's just being mischievous with the issues he's raising. First of all, how, how so? Oh, yes, I mean, clearly he tends to miss the issues of budget statements on government machinery mm. with the uh, presidential office staffers. Okay. Actual figures of 998. Okay. I mean, he knows they are two different things. And yet he tries to confuse people who don't understand. And that is what the information minister came out to explain. That when you talk about workers at the office of government machinery, it comprises a number of institutions, including ministries, departments, mm -hmm. and others that work. In fact, including even my office, the National Entrepreneurship and uh, Innovation uh, Plan, mm -hmm. which is under office of government machinery, but mm -hmm. we are not presidential staffers. Okay. You understand? So clearly, uh, you realize that a lot of the mischief that the NDC is trying to do is just to confuse the numbers mm -hmm. that uh, the, the numbers that are working. He calls all of them presidential staffers, mm -hmm. which is also not true. And you see the I haven't the, called all the, of them. I said office of government machinery. So, oh, so, do you, the so they are not all presidential no, staffers. Presidential staffers are a subset. A subset. Exactly. Yeah, of the of the the 19 exactly. Yeah. Agencies. And yeah. whilst they continue to make this argument, the same people opens to page 216 of the budget statement yes. and make claims that the 12 people allocated to the office of the special prosecutor is not enough. Yeah. Is it yeah. enough? Exactly. As a lawyer. No, I'm coming. Clearly, I mean, but the things he speaks about, you don't have to employ new investigators and new prosecuting officers. You already have them at the police CID, Yoko. So it's a matter of just reassignment. Okay. And, and, and it will function properly. But the same people that are complaining that even the numbers that we have working under Office of Government Machinery is huge, the same people are also complaining that they are even not sufficient. So which of the arguments should we buy into? My, quest no, my, question, my yeah. question was... Are you worth your paycheck? Because he raises a question about the numbers, efficiency, I'll get to that. and yeah, how much exactly. we're committing I'll, I'll, to I'll, you. I'll get to that. But clearly, people are not feeling. yes, exactly. I mean, clearly, it's not even about the numbers, as you have rightly asked. It's about performance. Mm. What is the expectation of Ghanaians? You left Ghanaians doing so in three years. Has it been resolved? Albeit not without difficulties that we are experiencing in the past one week, which the information uh, the energy minister has come to clear that this is just a temporary situation. We have firm grips of doom so situation. Has nursing and teacher training allowances been restored? This is the expectation of government uh, Ghanaians. We were importing even maize into Ghana, grains and like maize. And all of maize. that falls under the Office of Government Machinery. Of course, maize, to the ministers, nurses, the president, and this so. government of free machinery staffers, 1D, 1F, now we are inaugurating the 1 District 1 factory all over the places. Mm. Is it not the same 1 District 1 factory which forms part of 
uh, uh, Office of Government Machinery. I have not seen the factory. You will see it if you want to. They are there. Ghanaians are seeing but it. The last time you were here, John Kuba, you told me 17. 19. 19. And 19. now it's over 50, as has been officially no, announced. But where are they? If yeah. you want to see, go out there. How, which of the, how many of the Tell districts have you visited? Tell yes. me a location. No, I'm coming. The There's no problem. I can even show you videos. No. If I even give, last week when President... Relax. Relax. Don't worry. If you need it, you know where to go to. You are a journalist. You are at a TV station. Know, you go to the one D one F office. John, you are or the here. Mini I'm you here. Came to when I tell you, team. you don't believe. Oh, when no, I told no. you I was even there, you doubted. I brought you videos. Okay. You are still asking questions. You meanwhile, from that time till now, you have not even visited one site. So I can't ask questions. No, what kind of questions when you are not demanding answers? You just want to ask questions or you want answers. If you want answers, last week mm. when the president was in Eastern Region, he commissioned one and you saw it. Mm. So everywhere the president has been, he's inaugurating this 1D, 1F. It's all over the places, every region. And we see it. So Ghanaians can Some speak. Some say they are old, old offices and companies. That I'm happy that old ones are becoming new under the NPP government. Oh, okay. It's beautiful. At okay. least we have a concept to rebrand the old ones and to bring in new ones. The, what is important is that they are working today. Okay. And we are creating jobs and expanding the economy. Mm -hmm. Under NEIP alone, we have trained 7,000 business startups in this country mm -hmm. and funded 1,350 mm -hmm. with financial support ranging from 10,000 cities to 100,000 cities. Within three years, from 2014 mm -hmm. to 2017 that the NPP left, NDC left government, mm -hmm. they trained uh, 100 and supported 68. This is their record. So it's not about uh, <laughs> uh, the numbers, it's about delivery. Mm -hmm. And it's about what is the expectations and the promises of the government. Are the and numbers are increasing? Delivering? Are they going to the, increase the, 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 the numbers? Are has been, no, rather, um, according to the information minister, by the end of 2019, we are going to see a decline in the office of president by 69 and the government machinery by 89. How many are retiring from your outfit? Who would not be replaced? Well, my I'm outfit is a, is a youth outfit, and we are not yet close to retirement okay. yet. <laughs> so so, there, so there are no old people there? No, no it's, a, it's a youth office. So okay. Not even consultants? No, no, no. Okay. How do you expect consultants to retire? They don't work with government. Okay. So leave the they, private they, sector. They don't the work issues with you, but, of discussion but if, you are, if, you are, if they are consulting for you, even from afar, and you are paying them, and yes. you want but to reduce they, your numbers, you may want to say bye-bye to them. I don't know, but you see, we, you have to understand the argument. Okay, what is the argument? The argument is not about private sector who are doing their work and their age. It's about government recruitment and those on government payroll and their age, which so is a private required by who law. Draws, who draws from the state funds is, by extension, our employee. No. Is that not it? <laughs> not at if, all. If a private consultant consults for you and you pay him our money, he's drawing from us, is he not? Please. The question of who is an employee is a question of law. Okay. We have the Labor Act that describes who is an 651, employee. 651-2003 exactly. is there. So, so don't confuse but it. But I'm not confusing, John Kumo. My question, if you, if you would allow me. <laughs> my question is, I have, I, I am, assume I'm an, an, an EIP boss. Okay. And you are consulting for me. Yes. You are 62. And that adds to the number of persons I pay from my kitty. The, no, that if the, to the persons I pay who draw from me no, I pay for my kitty. It doesn't add up? It doesn't add up. Okay. And what I'm saying is that those you pay are your employees. Okay. But those you contract on specific job descriptions and pay right. are contractors. Right. They are not your employees. Beautiful. Those so, are the two so things the, I the contractors, yes. are you going to lose some of them in a bid to, to save us money? Well, their job description is always defined, and when they ex they finish execution, they are done. Okay. So those are not employees. That's what I'm saying. That okay, right. Those are not employees. They are contractors. They are contractors on specific Beautiful. job descriptions, and once they complete, they are but done. But you don't know the number of people who are retiring. Well, the information is already According out officially. I don't know what number you're looking for again. Okay. Under the Office of President, we are expecting a decline of about 69. Okay. Under Office of Government Machinery, we are expecting about 89. Okay. So this is what the information that has been put out. And I'm saying that. These are matters that we must not confuse. Okay. We, the office of president, mm. as he rightly put, is a subset under the office of government machinery. Okay. And you should not confuse the two okay. to make it look like Who's we are bloating. The but the whole press conference by the NDC is just seeking to... Their questions are not legitimate. 
Well, uh, they have the right to ask, but I'm saying that you can ask things mischievously, and okay. that's what they are trying to do, just mm. to confuse those who don't have the picture about what is really happening. Okay. They, uh, uh, they say the numbers are big, mm. and, and yet they are not talking to the performance. Okay. Okay? This is the economy that they left at a huge debt beyond 70% to our GDP and took us to IMF. As we speak today, mm. the same numbers that they complain about have manage the economy side that we are coming back from IMF conditionalities and we are growing and expanding the economy and making things, creating jobs and opportunities for the youth in this country. And you know, NAPCO is working as we speak. All the opportunities and interventions that the president and the NPP government promised are being delivered. This is the expectations of the people. At the end of the four years, they are going to ask us what did we do to improve their lifestyle. Okay? And as at we, what cost? Yes, and at what cost? You understand? The cost is what we are seeing today. The benefit far outweighs the cost. Mm. And as we speak, like I told you, electricity costs to Ghanaians. They know that up to 30% reduction in the business and industrial sector. Dr. Kabla Doko said that was populist. Well, we thank him that he has a definition for it. But Ghanaians appreciate that populism. Mm. You understand? As we speak, households enjoy below 17, up to 17% reduction in their uh, utility payments. Okay. So these are the realities that Ghanaians want to testify to. Mm. It's not about numbers and figures that you know, can be challenged at any time. And, and when they think that it, it's convenient for them, they bring one figure after another. Mm. So clearly, I mean, I don't see the argument that they are making. Okay, honorable. Quick rebuttal and then we move on. We, we need to. You see, <laughs> I think that we should treat the people of this country with some respect. Mm. How can you look Ghanaians in the face and tell them that 998, which is a subset of the Office of Government Machinery, mm. with a ceiling of 953 in the 2017 budget, mm. which has shot up to 1,614, mm. is a reduction. Mm. How can you look Ghanaians in the face and tell us that your 2017 ceiling of 953, which you exceeded, because the case has been made worse now. They are telling us that there are so many other departments that they have not even reported to Parliament yet, and that we should not uh, treat the President's communication to Parliament as the entirety. Mm. So, so, so it's, it's, it's the problem is even bigger than we thought. The wastage, the, the, the level of, 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 of recklessness. You sound, it's, you it's, sound it's, quick it's, to say it's, there's it's even, wastage. It's even bigger. They say there is no wastage. See, there's, it's, it's, there's it's, it's, it's bigger, results of the spending. Bigger, it's bigger than we thought. Because if, if, there is, if, there is, if there is a duty mm. that in a previous administration, one person carried it out very competently, like you had one transport minister, we have a Terminal 3 airport now, mm. the whole of Africa is talking about it, the Nigerian artists who came for the Afrima, uh, I mean, we just overly excited and calling on Nigerian politicians to emulate John Muhammad's example. Two Face, you know. Maybe. Yes, I mean, there is so many of those celebrities from Nigeria. Not only Two Face, you know, all the even those in the in the film industry. Not only the musicians, so virtually everybody, you know, and including the good people of Ghana, you know. And and yet now, when you have spliced and diced those sectors, you have the aviation, you have. You have roads, you have transport, you have railways, you know, and, and so many deputies and numerous spokespersons. And yet, <laughs> you cannot rival what your predecessors did. And you even claim, it is only in Ghana, under the MPP, that those who say they are more competent, mm -hmm. hmm, you need more of them to do less of what the incompetent ones were doing. Can you imagine that? The, the, I mean, what's the logic? The real sector is coming up. You know, so, well. so, 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 you, you have failed to, so, to, so, to acknowledge so, the real sector coming up. So, 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 my brother, Joe Gatti. look, so, my brother, you are, you are ignoring you this, see, this fact. You see, the Honorable Joe Gatti knows, and he's my very good friend, he okay. knows mm -hmm. that all of what he's doing now are blueprints he inherited from us. He knows. So he, he added did, nothing. He, he 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 knows that. He added nothing. He knows that. I he mean, added this nothing. Is, this is a matter we've confronted him in parliament. He added with. nothing. He, you know, well, he's adding his energy and drive, and he's doing well. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's my good friend. I mean, but but, but let's face it: the, the, the blueprint, the Kojo Chrome Railway, and all of that are are, are, are interventions. Okay. So please let nobody let nobody say mm. that the office of government machinery is coming down. 
mm. is undergoing a programmed reduction. Right. To quote the information <laughs> minister verbatim, there is no programmed reduction. Mm. From a ceiling of 953, we are now talking about 1,614. Your report to parliament, you exceeded that ceiling, 998. Okay. So we are seeing a, a, a spike. Mm. We are seeing a ballooning of an already obese government. And we are asking, why does President Kufado like big governments like that? We complain about 110. Then he increased it to 111. So this is not new. So when we complain, when we complain about 998, now we have a ceiling of 1,600. 2019 is an action you know. year. You, you need to relax for the action, action to come to you. We heard that in 2017. He said he's in a hurry. He's in a hurry. He appointed 111 ministers. What 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 are the results? Okay. You see, and my brother says that uh, uh, they are doing so. Look, go and talk to the teacher trainees. Mm. You know that the colleges of education are closing down as we speak. They've been on strike for five weeks now. Mm. The lecturers there. I mean, the education sector is in crisis. The, is, is, the, it in uh, crisis? Uh, <laughs> is it in crisis? Is it in crisis? You but saw what happened at KNUST. I mean, the, the, me it's, it's failure of introducing new failure issues. of leadership. The education really? minister was in parliament last week, and he didn't know <laughs> that from September next year you need him to accept free, free SHS. He didn't know. He got up and he was, he was very, very uncharitable with his uh, parliament the has description not approved, of us. Approved, approved you that know? policy yet? So page three one zero. You know. You know, when they, when, when they, like the information minister suggesting that the office of government machinery is coming down, I don't know whether they don't expect us to read the budget or they have not, you know, whether they outsource the budget preparation and so the ministers do not know what is in the budget. Paragraph 310 is very, very clear. So there's so many instances where you tell them that, look, this is what is happening on the ground. This is what is in the budget. And that those in charge of the sector don't know. So... One wonders what really is going on in this country. John. Um, uh, I mean, the specific issues of uh, education. Right. Clearly, I'm surprised. I mean, he was in charge of education in this country. Minister. Yes. And he knows the issues that are being raised today. I mean, there were a number of strikes and dissents during the NDC regime. Nonetheless, they didn't hear them. Today, their allowances have been restored. The, even the, the issue under, 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 under protests at the moment right. is the question of their status. Now, they, they say they are also tertiary institutions and they are entitled to research allowances. That's not a matter. And so they must also be heard. This is a matter that you didn't resolve in your regime. But you and, promised and, to resolve. Uh, no problem. No, it's so so, so it, is being, it is being worked how on. Long, how long will it take? I, I, but you see, there are people in charge. They are working. It, okay. it, it takes a while. He has been in in charge before and he knows that all these things requires negotiations and budget arrangement and all that to factor everybody into it mm. but let us not make it sound like the education uh, sector is in crisis oh, in what crisis, crisis? I mean, students are enjoying free sh they, they, who they, have they, not been posted but you didn't post them in your time they were you, they were you, you stayed you home you for you three, three years you you didn't post them we met the problem they stayed home for five years under your government what what else can we do we need to provide some respite for them okay. and we are you have the what problem the respite? we the the respite These is to put some of them through napco teach uh, ghana and all others just to engage them whilst okay. we look for long-term solution to this problem you left the problem sure we if are i go solving. to the whatsapp console now i'll find <laughs> messages we are solving from, the from problem teachers on, on <laughs> so that's on the that impact of the big government they okay. are solving problems really? you are solving problems <laughs> yes at what cost very cheap cost <laughs> <laughs> john kuma okay your WhatsApp message is 020 21 uh, AU Farouk in Tamil says, Good morning. Why is the government not accepting the reality? If Doomsaw is not back, why are we in Doomsaw? The intensive and clueless government must go. <laughs> Good morning, JH. There is one thing that Ghanaians should understand. And Doomsaw at Mohammed's time was hell for him because at the time there was not enough installed capacity. But now that we have enough installed capacity as a country, I expect this government to do better on generation capacity fueling the plants because Dumso also contributed to their victory in 2016. Kai Jesus in Mankwazi Gumwa West. JB in his arm says, ah, so NDC members are not ashamed of themselves for commenting on energy issues in this country where 
where, where, where there's no shame, where there's no shame, there's no honor indeed. All the NDC is praying for is the return of a child called Dumso. But I'm assuring them that the agenda will not see light. Toby uh, Gabusu is still alive and Sam Peter Meru will deliver. I rest my case. Diana Brani. Good morning. Please, why is all media houses quiet? College of Education teachers are on indefinite strike. John. And no one seems to care. This government promised better education. And see, what at all government communicators know is microeconomics. Also saying the environment is good for business. But we're suffering. They're needing uh, with our education system. And no one cares. Inusa, student campus. Okay. Uh, Mubarak Idris from Lima says, Good morning, TV3. Tell the NDC to be silent in the issue of Dumso, on the issue of Dumso because they have nothing to offer to help the situation. Three living years of Dumso in Ghana and the JM and the NDC is far different from this because we paid more for Dumso in their regime while we pay less with enough electricity supply in Akufuado and MPP's regime for now. Sofo Yamusa in Kumbugu says, I'm happy the Nado and led government has been uh, proactive in assuring that Dumso does not return to the country. Ghanaians should patiently bear with government as they work to resolve the current power crisis. Alasan one I wa, if members of the minority NDC don't stop peddling falsehood that the president's st presidential staffers have increased from 998 to 1,614, they will stay in opposition for a long time. Okay. And uh, Alasan one I wa says, this budget will be the budget of hope and every living soul will enjoy it. So let's acknowledge and applaud the president and the finance minister. And uh, this administration led by the Kufuado is putting all measures in place to ensure that Ghana will no longer return to the long dark days of power outages under John Mahama. Good morning, TV3. I want to tell Nana to resolve the doom so before it gets out of hand, said Boachi in cantonment. Hi, good morning. Please tell Dr. Kwabina Donko that all is paper talk. Ghanaians will not understand it. We need it practically. Paper talk now is too much. NS from Nungwa. Good morning. If 180 million Ghana cities are located to special prosecutor's office and they couldn't resolve, recover all money for corruption officials, then Martin Abedu should be prosecuted. Well, but the money was just given to him. Parliament has not even agreed on Yes. Finally, uh, good morning, Johnny and your crew. I think our leaders must be serious and tell Ghanaians the truth. We are revisiting doom. So by this MPP, when in opposition, bastardized the ruling government with all sort of de denigrative... Uh, statements as doom, uh, incompetent. Mr. President and your panel, where is your competence? It's not a matter of confusing Ghanaians with big, big English, but do the work. You are in a hurry. Ghanaians will equally not be spectators. Nelson Mandwaya in Tamale there uh, on your screens. Gentlemen, your final thoughts. I'll pick them. I'll start with you, Honorable Ablakwa. Well, I, I do believe that at the end of the day, we should be very sincere with the people of this country. Mm. Uh, facts are sacred. When the budget documents we have brought to Parliament ourselves, and I refer to the executive, <laughs> have been referenced, don't accuse others of conjuring figures or peddling falsehood. I mean, we are only referencing the documents okay. that you have brought to Parliament. Mm. And so if you are ashamed of the 1,000 614 figure. Do something about it. You have an opportunity okay. to amend it. Right. Don't go after those who are only pointing to what you have put in the budget. I mean, I didn't alter this budget. Okay. You did. So I, I think that we should really, really, really uh, begin to see a cap in, I think, moving forward. Um, let us amend the constitution so we can have a ceiling on the number of ministers. Mm. Uh, at least in the, within the judiciary, some convention has emerged right. that successive presidents have not you know, exceeded, though we don't have a ceiling there. Mm. And then the Presidential Office Act should be amended okay. so that we can have you know, uh, a ceiling. And these are matters that some of us would be willing to discuss if a private member's motion even can be uh, accepted by Mr. Speaker mm. so that we can, the speaker we can, said he's going can, to allow that. We can uh, make progress. How far on, we traveled on, with on, that? On, on some of these things, there are a few, you know, trials and experimentation going on. You know, it's not been done before mm -hmm. in our history. So that's but, something but, that Professor Premper mentioned mm -hmm. that the Constitution allows for everybody to be able to push in the bill, mm -hmm. but your standing orders precludes members of parliament from doing so. Mm -hmm. The law <laughs> says so, but mm -hmm. your conviction says. Yes, yes I saw you know, that. I saw yeah. that. But it, it's a matter that clearly has to be straightened. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and, and you see, okay. uh, we can do more with a few. That is efficiency. That's efficiency. That okay. is efficiency. John, <laughs> yes, uh, closing thoughts. Yes, 
I mean, clearly, I just want to reassure Ghanaians that uh, the mandate that has been given to His Excellency Nana Dudankwa Kufuado mm. is being respected and that all the promises of job creation, of improving their welfare and improving the economy is being delivered. Okay. And that um, the, there is no bloating of figures at the office of president. Mm. In fact, if you look at the figures the NDC is referring to, Mm. Even in 2019, okay. it's going to come down. And so there has not been any increases in the Office of Government Machinery. Mm. Uh, Have you uh, read the budget? I, I've read the budget. You just read it here. Okay. We yes. saw the figures. Yes. There so is there's no, no increases. Increase. There's no increases and there's no cause for alarm. What is important mm. wow. is the promises and the pledges that were made that are being fulfilled. And no. going forward, we are even but going to do more. Shouldn't, you shouldn't accept this. Why, why shouldn't he accept this? Yes. What, this the is not the budget. Is this the budget? <laughs> but why do you take the budget and pick this document? Okay. There are two I, different I, documents, I, and that's what is confusing you. This is what is confusing you. Is is confusing you, 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 you pick a budget okay, and you pick you. this document. So, lawyer John this Kuma, is not, this is he spoke on behalf of the NPP, he is the boss at the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan. Thank you, John Kuma, for your time. And the Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa is the Member of Parliament for North Tongue. He's also the ranking member of the Committee in Parliament on Foreign Affairs. Gentlemen, thank you very much thank for you. your time. We're grateful.